And I am going to show you how to create a type of op art where you are basically hiding a shape. It's a bit of a hidden shape um, and it includes a lot of movement lines that help your eye kind of travel towards the middle where we have our focal point. So when we're doing something like this, it's important to have some things to trace ready to go. Um, if you want to do a circle, you can do things like cups. Um, I've got a tape roll here. Um, even like lids, little plastic lids and things would work really well. If you wanted to do something like a square, you could use um, post-it pads that come in square shapes or rectangle shapes and those would work. Um, if you want to make a triangle, you can just do the three points, the three corners, and then connect them with a ruler. So um, you can choose your shape. If you want to do a shape and you don't want to trace something, you could do that as well. If you were looking for something like a star or a heart, that's fine too. Now, when you get started, you're going to need a piece of paper. I'm using a piece of paper I cut in half, like a copy paper. So I'm just using half here. And um, I've got my ruler, my pencil, and then some sort of black marker. Um, these illusions are stronger when they are done in black and white or opposite colors. So um, if you want to use a Sharpie permanent marker or just a Crayola black marker, that's fine. Now when you get started, you are going to start with the shape first. So if you want to do it more than one time, like I did with the square, it is an extra step, but you can definitely do that. Um, obviously the more shapes you put in, the more the illusion is um, in that picture. So if you just want to do one shape, that's fine too. So if I were going to do my circle, um, I'm going to use my tape roll here. I think that's nice and big. And then I'm going to use my pencil and I'm just going to kind of trace around it to get the shape first. Okay, so now that I have my shape, next is that I need to basically find the center. And to do that, I'm gonna use my ruler. And if you don't have a ruler at home, anything that has a straight edge will work for this because you're not measuring. And then I'm gonna use my pencil. So I wanna connect the ruler from the corner to the corner. So I'm gonna line it up and make sure it kind of matches on the corners. And then I'm gonna draw a line. I want you to notice I'm holding the ruler in the middle here. I'm not holding it at one end. And I do what I call the L grip. So it looks like my hand's making a letter L. And then I put my fingers and my thumb down to put pressure against the ruler. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna do that again for the other corners. So lining that ruler up, getting it lined up with the corners. If you wanna anchor one corner with your pencil to push it against it, you can do that. And then I now can find the middle. So that's gonna be really helpful because in our third step here, we're gonna draw the vertical line and the horizontal line. So I'm gonna put my pencil in the middle, that's my resting point, and then I can push the ruler against it and then kind of straighten that ruler as much as I can and draw my line. And then same thing the other way. So I'm gonna put my pencil here in the middle, push the ruler against it, try and get it as straight as I can and make the line. All right, in the fourth step here, you're gonna add one more line in between the lines you have. This is really important so that you can color it correctly. If you don't have an exact number of lines here, let's say um, you're missing just one, you'll end up trying to do coloring and then you'll come across um, two spaces that end up black and black next to each other or white and white next to each other. So it's really important that we have the right number of lines for this that it's the same on both sides. So I'm gonna put my pencil back in the middle here and I'm gonna try and do a line between here and here. It doesn't have to be exact. Close as I can get it. All right, so always anchor your pencil in the middle and then push the ruler against it because then it's nice and easy to turn. Try and find the middle of each of those spaces. All right, so I've done this one and this one. Now I need to do these. So pencil in the middle find that point these are going to be a little bit wider because this length on my paper is longer than this length if you don't want that to happen you can use a square paper and then you won't run into that problem all right last one here okay so now i have all my lines so now it is time to color so this is where you're going to use your black marker I prefer the Sharpie. I think it's just a little bit darker of a black than the washable marker, but either one works fine. 
So you're gonna color every other space. Sometimes it helps to kind of mark them, and if you do it, mark it in a pencil. So you can just put like a little dot, but you wanna color one, skip one, color one, skip one, color one, skip one, color, skip, color, skip, color, skip, color, skip, color, skip. So you can see it will be a black and white alternating pattern. So then what I'll be doing is coloring the spaces that have the dots. So I always like to outline it first so that I have nicer coloring inside the lines and give it that clean edge and then fill in the middle. So I'm gonna do that for every space that is marked with a dot. Always trying to outline that space and stay on the lines. And then after I outline the space, filling in the middle. Trying not to leave any white spaces showing. So I'm gonna do half of this just to show you what the next and final step is. Um, after I color these last two spaces, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to color on the outside. It is a similar way of doing it, but it's the opposite space. Let me get one more of these done here. All right, so now that I have this top half done on the inside of the circle, Part of the illusion is that the shape shows up because of how we color it. So when we're doing this, um, we're gonna flip to the opposite when we color outside. And that makes basically this edge of the circle disappear and it just becomes alternating shapes that then create the illusion of the circle. So on the outside, it's the opposite effect. So here, if it's not colored inside, I do color it outside. If it is colored inside, I don't color it outside. So it's color, skip, color, skip, color, skip, color, skip. So then on the outside, I'm gonna outline just like I was doing on the inside. And when you're doing the outside, because you're coloring against the edge of the table, it helps to have an extra sheet of paper, a scrap paper of any kind, even if it's just junk mail, um, underneath it so that if you're going off the edges, it doesn't get on the table surface then you're gonna be coloring these outside spaces. And it does help sometimes to use more of the side of the marker when you're coloring bigger spaces. It takes a little less time. Especially if you're using the Crayola type marker because it has a wider coloring piece that, oops, I'm a little bit too far in, has a wider part of the cone here. So you would end up getting this whole side instead of coloring with the tip. So I always recommend kind of leaning the marker back and coloring more with the side. All right, so then you would be working on that all the way around on the outside edge. So when it's done, you can see the shape, but the shape is actually now created not with the line anymore, but with the way you've colored the spaces opposite inside and outside. Now, if you do something like this one where you have a um, double shape, or even more, so you would just continue to alternate. So you would still start in the middle with coloring, do the opposite in the next shape, and then do the opposite again on the final edge. So that's how I did the square one here. This circle one that I created, this is kind of a, a alternative if you don't have a ruler as well, is rather than doing straight lines from the center, I did wavy lines. So um, I, I started with a wavy line that went to the corners, just like with the straight lines that I gave you. And then I did a vertical and a horizontal and then one in between. So if you didn't have a ruler, this could also work as well. All right, I hope you have fun. I'll see you later.